I um, grew up in a musical family, and uh, so uh, you know, picking up an instrument was a kind of a logical progression for me. But uh, I started out playing the viola, and then realized you know the guitar had a lot of songs in it. You could carry a guitar around and and play with other people, and um, you could play a whole tune. This is the lovely Gretsch White Falcon, which is uh, I don't know. It's so beautiful, you know. Somebody looked at this guitar when I was carrying it one day and they said, you better be able to play that or you're going to be all hat and no cattle. I took some convincing in my folks, but you know, I hung in there and here I am. I never thought I'd be playing guitar to make a living out of it, but it's worked out that way. I remember a couple of years ago you told me that you were really focusing on just trying to produce as much music as you could, writing it, mixing it, playing it, that uh, that, that really was your focus. How is that going right now? Well, I think I'm still um, driven by that as a sort of a dream and vision, but other things have, have happened. You know, I've, I'm probably more interested in trying to be a dad and than I am being uh, interested in being a musician right now. And then we have this thing right here, which is my son's. This is Liam Stratocaster here, the Squire's mini Strat, and uh, don't be uh, don't be persuaded by the size that this is not an axe of destruction and doom because it is. He gets plenty of sound out of it. I'll tell you that. And I'm certainly more um, qualitative. I'm trying to be involved in uh, projects that I think are are unique and interesting from a musical point of view, versus just putting stuff out that I think is the next chapter, the next CD, the next project. You're set up here in your basement, you've got your studio down there, and that's a pretty common occurrence in the industry right now, isn't it? It really is, yeah. I think uh, a lot of folks that had bigger studios have pared them down. A lot of the new generation of musicians are so tech savvy and um, computer literate that they can do amazing things on a laptop. You are gentle and you are kind. You are a better person than I am. The way that people hear music, the way people consume music, and the way that it is shared among listeners has dynamically shifted the way it's produced. I'm just trying to be me now. So you recorded that track right in here. And I like it when you come around. We did. We went to Kentucky and did the drums, and then we come back here and do all the overdubs. You don't belong here. You're working on a project right now with a string quartet out of Ohio. Tell us about that. A wonderful quartet called Carpe Diem. They approached me to uh, do a concert with them where they arranged strings for a bunch of my songs that I'd been playing for a while. I am a man with a story to tell. And I didn't know who they were at all. I went down to Ohio and I thought, well, I'll bring a mobile rig and um, a couple engineers and we'll record it and see what happens. And it was really magical. So we have a live CD that's coming out in October when we play the Paps Theater. You're also working on a project with a group called Storyville. Yes, Storyville. That's a fantastic project. A uh, group of people who have started a coffee company. Um, they call the company's mission. It's a forgiving company. All of the profits go to end global slavery. Seven million people are currently enslaved in the world. Several million are children um, in the human trafficking trades. And so Storyville's mission is to share great music, great coffee, and the mission of freeing slaves all around the world, um, one house concert at a time. 
That's always been a big part of who you are as a musician. Songs with a conscience. I am free from fear of violence. I am free within and free without. Freedom from all borders. I'm freedom from no doubt. Freedom growing wild and gracefully in green. I'm freedom from the soil. I'm freedom from a bean. I'm, now I'm also looking for the tune that hasn't been written. It's on the tip of everyone's tongue sometimes. And um, I mean, I'm not necessarily a fan of of sort of comedy music, per se, but um, I think we're losing our ability as, as Western culture to laugh at ourselves, and that's a tragedy that I think we need to embrace. As I helped him up with his bike, I saw Cecil Cooper in his spokes. You know, you can't help but be who you are from where you are, and I love this town. Sometimes it doesn't show. And if I could work Cecil Cooper into a tune, I'd consider that a victory on all levels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are your goals musically? You, you and I, I've interviewed you a bunch of times, and you know how I feel about you. I think you're as good as anybody out there anywhere. Do you ever feel like you're getting shortchanged? That you should be bigger? Do you want to be bigger? I can see those visions dancing across the foot of my bed. I don't know. I feel as though the world, the universe, God has been great to me. Um, I, I don't feel owed anything. I never have. I've cursed your name a thousand times more. I like to work hard. I like what I'm doing. Growing as a musician, being a better player. Well, sure, I'd like to be successful in terms of more people hearing what you're doing and, and um, being able to reach a broader audience with a good song that has a, has a cool message. Absolutely. Financial remuneration, you know, sure. But does that always make life easier? I don't think so. So I think everything comes at a great cost. And, and so um, loving what you do and loving the people you work with, that to me is what it's all about. No angry words.